Today we're going to look at a very important concept in communication system, and that is what is frequency or what is communication bandwidth. It is a very important concept because we don't just communicate over time, but also we require communication bandwidth in order to communicate. So the title of this slide, what is a hertz and what is in a hertz? Basically, what is frequency and what is communication bandwidth? Now, the term hertz refers to a frequency, namely how many cycles you complete within one second. For example, we say our electricity is at a frequency of 60 cycles per second. Namely, that your alternating current completes 60 cycles within one second. So we say the frequency of our AC power is 60 hertz. Now, when we communicate, we don't just communicate with a pure sinusoid and we communicate with multiple frequencies. And so when we talk about bandwidth, we talk about sinusoid that is within a, a frequency bandwidth. So let's just go through this concept, the concept of frequency spectrum. When I'm talking to you, at this time I have a speech signal, and that speech signal contains a number of frequencies. And so we say signal in time can be decomposed into frequency components. And that process of decomposing a time domain signal into multiple frequencies is called Fourier transform. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about that. We say a signal is band limited if the signal has frequency component within a particular frequency band. It could be from 0 to 60 hertz, so you may have some signals at 30 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, and 60 hertz. Now, what is basic to communication is that somehow we can move a group of signals within a frequency band into another frequency band. That process is called modulation. So you could have a signal that's between 0 and 60 hertz, and for the purpose of transmission, you may move it to 1,000 to 1,060 hertz, and therefore that process involves a signal being modulated to occupy different frequency band in a large uh, frequency spectrum. Now, after you do the modulation, which is basically moving the signal from one frequency band into another frequency band, you can transmit this modulator signal either in a wire system through the use of a couple wire, a coaxial cable, or a fiber. On the other hand, you can also transmit the same signal in a wireless system, for example, through a microwave transmission system, or through a satellite communication system, or through a cellular communication system. So here we have a very basic notion of frequency and also frequency band. Now, when we, as pointed out in the last lecture, that we can either do analog communication or digital communications. So, what is really communication? Communication involves the process of transmitting information over distance. For either the information could be a speech, in a speech format, could be in a video format, or it simply is data. Now, of, often information is generated as an analog waveform for analog communication. So here we have a block diagram that details for analog communication the different components in the entire communication system. First, you have the communication channel, for example, a pair of copper wire. And then, before the communication channel, you have a transmitter. And on the other hand, you have a receiver. And prior to the transmitter, 
you have information source and information transducer. The information source could very well be my speech. The transducer could very well be uh, a microphone that convert my sound speech into an electrical signal before it's transmitted over the channel, which is a pair of copper wire, and receive on the other end, and at the other end it is transduced back into a speech uh, signal so that we can consume it. On the other hand, if you do digital communication, it's a little bit more complicated. As we pointed out last time, uh, you need to kind of convert first the analog signal into a digital format. And that involves, besides a modulator, there's a digital modulator and a digital demodulator that pass a signal onto the channel, you need to convert the information source, which is analog in format, quite possibly, into a digital format, and in that process, you need to first, after you transduce the signal from, say, an analog into a, uh, in, from a speech signal into a uh, electrical signal, you need to do what is known as source encoding, which is involved first sampling the signal, quantizing the signal, and compressing the signal. And afterwards, you may want to add a channel encoder in order to make the signal more robust to channel noise before you pass into the digital demodulator. Now, what you see is that on the receive end, which is the bottom here, you have the reverse of every of the device on the transmit end. You have a digital modulator, and then you have a digital de demodulator. A channel encoder, you have a channel decoder, you have a source encoder, and then on the other side you have a source decoder before you pass the signal onto uh, the consumption side. So as we said before, you would require two basic theory. One, the Nyquist sampling theorem, which is stated here very simply, to construct a signal that is band limited to a frequency F, we need 2F samples per second. And second is Shannon's channel capacity theorem, which states that for a bandwidth, channel band of bandwidth W, transmitter of power P, and the noise power that has a, a density of power at n per hertz, the capacity, namely the number of bits per second you can set, is governed by this formula, which is proportional to the bandwidth that you have, times a logarithm base 2 of 1 plus the power to noise ratio and the bandwidth that you use is also happening uh, in the uh, denominator here. So just to recap a little bit, in order to communicate either in analog format or in digital format, you need time. The more time, the more information you can transmit. You also need frequency. The more bandwidth you have, the faster you can transmit information. Also in space, the larger the transmitter and the receiver, for example, your dish is bigger or you have multiple transmitter antenna or receiver antenna, then you can send more information. And power, the more power you have, the more information you can send. And not only that, the signal to noise ratio determine not only the number of bits per sample you can uh, send or receive, but also the, uh, the fidelity of the signal you have on the receive end. So when it comes to the frequency spectrum, uh, we can talk about frequency spectrum either for wireline channels or for wireless channel. And here I'm just very briefly describing for the wireline channel uh, from a very low frequency of say 1 kilohertz all the way to uh, a very high frequency. On this side, you can look at the frequency. On the other side, you can also look at the wavelength, which is uh, wavelength lambda is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency of light. Now, for the wireline channel, you can look at it. Basically, most of the wireline channel is uh, at the frequency band is from 1 kilohertz to about 1 megahertz. For coaxial cable, you can go from about 1 megahertz to about a gigahertz. Waveguide, you can go to about 100 gigahertz further. 
Uh, beyond that, you really have to do wireless communication in the infrared or the visible light region or the ultraviolet re region. What is interesting is that basically, in the visible light region, you're talking about a frequency of close to 10 to the 15 hertz and a wavelength of about one micron or uh, uh, one millionth of a meter. Now, on this side, you will see basically the frequency uh, spectrum in for for wireless communications. What you have here is that um, there's a category of the different frequency band. Uh, at the very bottom, you have the audio band. And then you have very low frequency, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency, and then you get into what is known as millimeter wave before you go further into the visible light region. Underneath that is the infrared region, and above that is ultraviolet region. Now, this frequency span is very often subdivided into different applications. And here you talk about at the very low frequency, uh, basically is for aeronautical and navigation and radio uh, teletype, or even submarine applications. And then in the one gigahertz region, you have the AM broadcasting uh, frequency band. Uh, in the higher end, high, a little bit higher than that, you have the amateur radio, citizen band radio, and so on. About 100 megahertz is where most of your TV signals and also FM broadcasting is uh, performed. Above that, you have UHF TV, and then from one gigahertz to about 5 gigahertz, you have various 1G, 2G, and 3G uh, 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 systems, mostly centered around 2 gigahertz. Beyond that, around 10 gigahertz, most of that frequency is used in uh, satellite and also in microwave relay. And beyond the 100 gigahertz, uh, is a lot of that is in uh, the millimeter range, which is used sometimes for. Uh, at around 90 gigahertz, you have the military bands. And beyond that, it's largely experimental.